Welcome to Short and to the Point, a podcast from the comeback in awful announcing. Here's your host, Jessica Kleinschmidt. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Short and to the Point. Jessica Kleinschmidt here for the comeback and awful announcing. I'm cheating on sports today, just a little bit. Um, I talked to my producer about this months ago, and I'm so blessed that I work for Awful Announcing, and they gave me this platform because they said I can tap into something that I've always been interested in, and that's honestly relationships, and especially in the modern age. And I manifested this. I was praying about it, and I was like, I, I need to kind of make this more of a relationship situation because I'm curious about relationships and what they mean in 2024 because the atmosphere, the market has certainly changed in dating over the last few years. So I was curious to know from a relationship expert what I'm going up against. So the next thing you know, my inbox pops up with the name of Michael Sartain and it, I instantly emailed my producer and said, we have to make this happen. And luckily everybody was very pro about it. The beauty is, is Michael actually has a background in sports radio. So that worked out to have the sports tie, but I barely talked to him about sports radio. We did tap into it a little bit, but it was all about relationships and how men approach women or how they think they're approaching women. And I'm always curious because like I said, I'm struggling a little bit in the dating department. So why not ask him? So here is my conversation with Michael. Well, as promised, Michael's here. There's a lot that I want to unpack with you. I've been prepping for this for a while. First and foremost, thanks for joining Short and to the Point. Of course. Of course. And so it's interesting. I, I, I'm, I'm dating. I'm currently dating. And I get a lot of questions about how I date. I don't know how to answer that because the overview of dating has changed so much especially when it comes to modern dating. And you have a couple of things you'd like to talk about when it comes to modern dating. How would you define modern dating and why are there so many complications around it? Yeah, so so when you think about our existence as humans, right? But about uh, the way I like to describe it, it's 178 million years of mammalian evolution, 3 million years of hominid evolution, and then 200,000 years of homo sapien evolution, and then like 15 years of Facebook. And we, we're confused because Facebook is so recent. We're confused by things, technology we see in modernity. And we think that those things have been around forever, but they're not. And so what's happened is there's an anthropologist named Dunbar, and he came up with this thing called Dunbar's number. And this concept is, oh, once you get past 150 people, you stop losing. You don't have room in your head for more than 150 people. And that's about how big, if you take notice, that's how big ancestral tribes are. And that's how big military units currently are today is about 150 people. Mm -hmm. So what's happened is you're set up to be born, go through puberty, like go through uh, adolescence, go through puberty, young adulthood, then find someone who's around your same age. There's maybe eight to 10 people in that age group that you're possibly able to, this is, by the way, this is the reason why men have approach anxiety when they come up to talk to strange women mm. is because there was only maybe eight to 10 women in your tribe that you had the ability to go talk to. And if you screwed up with one of them, you were going to die a virgin. We look at the chromosomes or the chromosomal records for men and women, and we find out about 40% of men have, have procreated throughout history and 80% of women. There's a lot of men, a lot, probably more than half of men who've ever been born died virgins. So when you realize that, it's like, okay, that's where the approach anxiety comes from. So now just think about everything I said, and now let's take these same homo sapiens who haven't really developed that much, and then let's give them access to infinite numbers of men and women that they can look right. at on social media. So now we have a one, we have certain studies that show women will will left swipe 600 times for every one time they they right swipe to go on a date with a guy. Women will will do something like 16,000 swipes to go on 10 dates. There's a one TikTok video of a gentleman. He did 1 million with an M, million right swipes and went on two dates. That was it for million. And he was an average looking guy. And then you see these women, they'll go on there and they'll say things like, well, you know, I think uh, Ryan Gosling is mid. I think he's average, right? You, yeah. You'll see stuff like that. So when you, when you go on these dating sites and you actually survey the women on there, they report 80% of men on these sites to be below average attractiveness. Well, mm -hmm. mathematically, that's kind of hard to do. 20% of these men, they, they say these 20% of men are attractive. And then the top four and a half percent of men are so attractive that women pursue. 
when you go look at the right swipe counters, you'll see the top 10% of men get 63% of the right swipes. That's only one, that's almost one standard deviation of women that go to 10% of men. The mm. top 20% of, of um, men get 83% of the right swipes. And this is the crazy one. The top 40% of men get 96% of the right swipes, which means the bottom 60% of men are competing for 4% of women on dating apps. And so when you see that, what's happened is men, so men have become delusional because, and I know a lot of people get offended when I use this word, but men have become delusional when it comes to these non-contextualized images they see in pornography that have caused men to believe that women act that way and look that way. And unless you live in Las Vegas, they don't look that right. way. And, and, and so they, they get to the point where they start believing that they can get women that they don't have possibly have a chance with. This is when you see the supermodel who gets the dick pics from the hundreds of guys, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Just utter and complete nonsense. So the guy who's sleep, you know, sneaking in your DMs, I want to see Bob's in Vagine, that kind of stuff. Where does it, where do those tropes come from? They come from men shooting their shot. Men have what's called an over perception bias, according to Dr. David Buss. He's an evolutionary mm -hmm. psychologist and women. Women, they have a delusion. And again, I know this word is offensive to a lot of people, but women have a delusion when they go on dating apps and they left swipe on 600 men. And in their mind, they think I'm better than these men. And I could mm. get all of these men or some of these men or most of these men to commit to me in a long-term relationship, not recognizing that this app is only for short-term sexual access. And so the, pro the problem is, and not to say, certainly some people get into long-term relationships from Tinder, Bumble, and Hinge. But for the most part, what we see with Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, Raya, uh, eHarmony and uh, OK Cupid is we see a lot of guys in there really looking for short-term sexual access, and we in almost all of those apps we see six times, three to six times as many men as women. In India, it's like eleven men for every woman, something like that. And mm -hmm. by the way, you know when you pay for those boosts on Tinder, Bumble, and Hinge, yeah. it's nine guys for every one girl that does that. And so it's just one of these situations where. Um, you know, we, we, we've got to the point where women believe because they fucked a 10 that they can get a nine to commit, right? They had sex with one time they had sex with a movie star. They had sex with like somebody celebrity at a party or whatever. And so they believe that they can get this guy who's like the super hot bartender in their city to commit to them. And they can't because they don't understand the concept between short term dating and long term dating. Mm -hmm. And then there's men who are delusional because they keep looking at non-contextualized images of women in bikinis on Instagram and because they, they keep looking at pornography. And then you end up with get guys under the age of 21 with erectile dysfunction. So what, wow. what's happened, the, the, short, the short and to the point answer, what you're saying <laughs> is it's an evolutionary mismatch. We were not designed biologically for the current environment that we're in. We have no. what's called the dilemma, the dilemma of perceived choice or the perceived dilemma of choice because we don't really have as many choices as we think we do. And it's interesting because I, I was just talking to a bunch of my girlfriends, like how the shift in dating has certainly occurred. I feel it over the last three or four years. It's just different. I miss being courted. And now these days being courted doesn't exist. A guy will like my Instagram story. I will see him in person and he'll say, well, like you, you knew I was checking you out. I liked your story. I'm like, yeah. that's the standard now. Why aren't men courting anymore? And why are they just like assuming that you can like a tweet, like an Instagram yeah. story and then boom, this, this is going to start or anything. It's, it's so great. Yeah. So there's, there's two reasons here. Number one, you don't want men to court you. You want men who are attractive to you to court you. Right. You don't want like yeah. most women say this is very confusing to men. And I, I ask any of the ladies who are watching this, if you could just change your language a little bit. You don't want a man to buy you flowers. You want a man you're attracted to to buy you flowers. You don't want a man to be vulnerable to you. You want a man you're attracted to to be vulnerable mm -hmm. to. When women don't, when women leave out that little bit of context, what happens is you start getting these weird approaches from men that you're not attracted to. And then the men that you are attracted to, unfortunately for in this situation, remember I said the top 20% of men are getting 83% of the right swipes on dating apps. Those men that you are attracted to, they get so much attention from other women, mm -hmm. one. And two, the other issue is this. One of the biggest things for men that they have a problem with, like if you ask most men, it's like, would you wait for the second, third, fourth, fifth date to have sex with a girl? Most guys would say yes, but they wouldn't say yes if the previous guy she dated had sex with her on the first date. And okay. so there's a lot of guys out there that are getting to this point where like, okay, I'm courting her, but she fucked Brock the bartender last week that mm. she just met. We don't like, that's not something that's feasible. Maybe you want to call it jealousy or immaturity or more properly an evolutionary adaptation. Well, that's something that happens. And so because men are afraid of that concept, that's why they don't court. So what, what's the, what's the least perceived effort I can show to show you interest so that maybe we can hook up a like, a comment, mm -hmm. send you a meme. What I found is the happy medium, Jessica, that's absolutely the best charity events, 
going to like group activities together, a big group of you going to the fair together, like a big group events with an entire social circle of people. I found those to be much better. That way, if the girl doesn't like the guy, she can just like peel off. It's not that big right. of a deal. And if it doesn't work out, we're still having fun because we're at the fair, we're at an animal rescue charity, something like that. I found that like the first date concept is a little bit difficult because like you said, men are afraid of being taken advantage of. That's because, and it's not your fault, Jessica, because I don't think you're taking advantage of anyone, but some women out there are. There's several women who report going on dating websites and say they're just, they're not there to date. They're there because they want attention. And mm. so when you do that and you receive that over and over again, as a man, you get to the point where you get a little bit jaded and it becomes very difficult to court. My girlfriend, it was, it was a unique situation. We met at a, I was hosting a bikini pageant in Mexico. She was, she was one of the finalists. And then I just like, I was just very direct. I was like, Hey, listen, we're going to see each other or not. It's what, what's up to you. But I've, mm -hmm. I've made up my mind. You're the girl I like. And so we ended up doing that and I ended up flying her out to Vegas and then she ended up moving out here with me. But that was a situation where if I had given her that attention and she had not responded by giving me attention and kind, I would have just dropped off. I wouldn't have continued to try to go after her. And so that's something that's happened is like, again, a, the perceived dilemma of choice because people think that they have more options than they actually do, then it causes people to not want to do things like court or wait. Yeah. Or, or be patient in these types of situations. And as soon as they see something better, oh, man, these artificial intelligent AI enhanced images of women now, they're making mm -hmm. things even worse. They're making things even worse. You have AI influencers on OnlyFans making hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. It makes things only worse, right? Men wow. paying women for non-contextualized images of their of, of sexuality on OnlyFans. It just, it just, what it does is just digs the hole deeper for these men. They have no ability to communicate with the opposite sex. They're becoming like they end up with these weird erectile dysfunctions. All this kind of stuff happens. And so that's the situation that we're in now. Right. So that's that's part of the thing. And the other thing, Jessica, I'll say this. You're successful at your job. You're outgoing. You're you know well spoken. A lot of guys, they, the, the word women use is intimidated. They're not intimidated. I What's promise the you. The, the, the intimidate is that they have a preference. And a lot of times what will happen is a guy will be like, I want to come home and I want to feel, you know, like I'm in some control. I want to feel a certain level of peace. And what women hear when they hear that is like, no, you're just intimidated because I have a career. No, mm -hmm. I've never been intimidated. I have never heard of a guy intimidated. That's the wrong word. The word is preference. I don't mm -hmm. like pick. For whatever reason, I don't like pickles. Just right. because I don't like pickles doesn't mean I'm intimidated by pickles. I bought a bed that's very comfortable, a Tempur-Pedic that's very comfortable because I want to sleep on a comfortable bed. I didn't buy a bed of rocks. Mm -hmm. And so when I, if I want to date someone who's going to just consistently end up in conflict with me because they're just as alpha as I am, I can have a preference to not be with that person, but that doesn't mean I'm intimidated by them. And I think it's really okay. bad when women give other women the advice that men are intimidated because you have a career, a master's degree or whatever. It's not that they're intimidated. It's that they have a preference for peace and long-term relationships happen when both of the partners can communicate with each other and then have a certain level of peace. It can't be a situation where they're constantly trying to one-up each other. And so that's that's why some men, I'm not always, but that's why yeah. some men choose that, that type of lifestyle. And, and I, and I get that. And I, and I, one thing I've researched a lot when it comes, like men do want peace and women do too. We don't want drama um, in most scenarios. Um, but when it comes to that, how do you kind of coincide having a career in a career intimidation and, and lacking peace though? Because you can argue that like, just like she could be tired from her job and just want to come home and be peaceful as well. Yeah, well, that's that's great. And when you have those situations, I don't really think that's big of a, that's big of an issue. Also, okay. when people work in the same in field, like for instance, if two people were psychologists or uh, both people worked in in sports radio yeah. or something like that, I think that's a little easier because the two of you can work together to build an empire. Yeah. Think of like Layla and Alex Hermosi would be a great example, or like Grant Cardone and his wife. That would be an example of like two people who are both influencers who are working and pulling in the same direction. I think that's mm -hmm. fine. I see I've seen couples on TikTok that make that work. I think what the issue is though. So it's like it's one of these situations where uh, um, I had two female squadron commanders when I was in the Air Force, uh, when I flew a KC-135 as a navigator. Uh, when I had them, it was one of these situations where when they were with us, like uh, with all the men in the unit, there was a very, I don't know what the word, a very leadership and non-feminine quality to them where mm -hmm. they were in charge and they let you know that they were in charge. And my my whole concern was if they brought that back to their husband, that was going to be a very difficult relationship. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so like that's that's 
again, a lot of people today now, they don't like the idea of innate gen gender differences, but there are. And in general, when a man leads and has masculine qualities, and in general, when a woman follows her man and has feminine qualities, those relationships in general tend to work better. It's not always the case. There's certainly women who are very alpha, right. who date men who act very beta, and they're happy in those relationships too. But for the most part, in general, most of the time, most relationships are going to work better that way. And we want men are attracted to women because they have the femininity, because that's something they lack and they they love that. So, for sure. For sure. so I'll how do you kind of if you if you were talking to a woman, and mm -hmm. no offense, I don't think you know what it's like to be a woman, right? So of how I how would how would you give advice to a woman who perhaps this is more personal? I feel like yeah. I definitely have a bro vibe about myself and I love yeah. it. I can't help it. I mean, that just that's just what I who I am and what I do. I was I yeah. played sports for a living. If, if I were to ask you, like, how do I be more feminine? What would you tell a woman? Well, it's it's not even more feminine. By the way, the fact that you're into sports, I th I think a lot of guys would find very attractive. I don't think yeah, that's it's a, a lot of fake. Issue. It's a lot of fake attention, though. I've no. You think it, so? it, just the just the stuff that you said about like the guys on my Instagram. It, it's just like, oh, she's she's pretty. She works in sports. It's it reminds me. So when I have people shadow me, yeah. for work. Um, they're bright eyed, bushy tailed. A lot of times I'm just walk, I'm waiting around for a guy to show up for an interview, to be in front of his locker, to like show up for a quick one-on-one -on -one. Yeah. and it's not as glamorous as they might think. Sure. So I think that that's what they think, or they think like, oh, I'm just going to come home and in my lingerie and give them fantasy football advice. That's not right. how that works. Um, <laughs> yeah. there, were, there were a lot of girls doing that for a while. Do you remember totally. that? Totally. And I get it. And don't so get me funny. wrong. I was a fantasy analyst for a little bit, but it's yeah. just, I also need to shut it off. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. but I also have the balance of, I want to be watching the game and I want to be watching like 90 day fiance kind of stuff. Yes. Yeah. It does help me in certain aspects. But I think a lot of it, I get so much attention on social media. They never approach me in public ever. Uh, I don't think uh, like for nothing you're telling me indicates to me that you'd be difficult to be in a relationship with. That doesn't seem the problem. It, it, and by the way, you're whether or not you're a cardiologist or you analyze QB quarterbacks, yeah. whatever the answer is, I don't think that's the problem. It's not the the femininity or masculinity of the job title. I think what it mm -hmm. is, is when we come home, every time I'm scrolling on Instagram, do you question whether or not I'm trying to go talk to this girl? Is it a constant necessity for there to be jealousy or try, right. trying to pick fights with me? Do you tell me how I feel or do you ask me how I feel? Do you exaggerate when we have conversations? Do you attack me or do you accuse me of things that you have no evidence for repeatedly like for instance, uh, let's say a couple's been together for five years, man's never cheated. And then he goes off and he's like talking to one of his female friends and she's just like accusing him of cheating. At some point, she needs to say, I have enough reference experience to know that my man isn't cheating and I need to be comfortable with this because if I don't, it's the constant accusations and the constant drama, the constant exaggerations and the constant attacks that drain a man of his life energy. And that's what takes away peace. So a lot of times women are like, well, no, I feel like I'm insecure in this relationship and I need validation from my man. And so I'm going to do something. I'm going to lash out to get that validation from him. And in doing so, she thinks she's fixing the relationship when really what she's doing is emasculating her man and she's making, she's draining him of energy, like an energy vampire, right? Okay. She's sucking the energy out of him. I'm constantly having to remind you that everything's fine in this relationship. And here's the other part, Jessica, that's really strange. And there's plenty of studies that show this. Uh, there's studies on what's called sexy sons hypothesis. Offices, and there's other studies on what's called mate choice copying. And this is the concept that women tend to find men more attractive when other women find those men attractive. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, right? So if I'm going to say, I have one of two uh, situations. One, Jessica, you could be dating a male sports reporter. And this male sports reporter has access to the best parties, is traveling all around the world. And in general, when you guys aren't together, he's at places where there's other beautiful women around. You're comfortable with that because you're comfortable where you are in your relationship. That's great. You understand that. But other women might find him attractive and you might find that attractive as well. And that could help with your relationship if you were secure with it. Another option is you and your man move out to Wyoming. You do a podcast together. You mm -hmm. never come in contact with any other women like that. But the thing is, women tend to find men more attractive when other women find them attractive. And so it becomes this, this like push-pull situation. Can you be with a man and then still provide him the peace that he needs at the end of the uh, at the end of the day? Can you do so and like not unnecessarily create chaos in a situation? Do men do this too? Absolutely, they do. Mm -hmm. but here's here's where here's where the rubber meets the road. You and I were talking about this beforehand about certain situations with SA. Uh, accusations, uh, stuff like that. 
And one of the issues is it's a small group of men who are narcissistic who end up love bombing the, the women. But these are the these guys are so good with women that you would just you know those. Uh, have you seen that on uh, MySpace or I'm sorry on Facebook? There's these groups called "Did We Date the Same Guy?" Have you ever seen these? Yeah, of course are I have. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm subscribed to like five cities. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, yes. so are we dating the same guy? So it's a small group. If you find out, it's a small group of men that are competing for these men who are just incredibly charismatic and they may actually suffer from NPD, narcissistic personality disorder. About five to four, three, four, five percent of women suffer from what's called borderline personality disorder. And those are the ones who are like Amber Heard. Oh, Johnny Depp hit me, but he didn't hit me actually. But then I pooped on his bed, but I forgot to leave that part out. Like, so what happens is there's this small group of men and women at the top that sort of like cry wolf and make the rest of the, the population have to sort of pay for that. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? But yeah. what, what happens is what happens is now because of what Amber Heard does now, nobody wants to believe all women anymore. And you should, for the most part, no one's going to claim SA for the most part, unless they have some kind of mental disorder, if it didn't happen. And the opposite is true. Right. Often you'll have men who will, who will often be like accused of, of stuff like that. And they're not guilty of it. So that that's the thing that happens, but it, it gets exasperated to where it's like all men or all women. And that's where it becomes problematic. But anyway, you were, you were asking specifically about a relationship. And the thing is just, do you provide peace it, or is there some level of loyalty? Right. Do I feel like we're in the same situation? If you and I go to a party together and we're dating, are you going to have my back? Or are you going to just tell embarrassing stories about me to other women that are in the party? Are you on the same team as me? Cody Sanchez? Mm -hmm. She has really great saying. She was like, when my, me and my partner are out together, we're always on the same team. Always. Mm -hmm. We would never talk bad about each other to anyone else in private. And so that's a, that's a really important thing to do. Are you testing your partner all the time? Mm. If I'm constantly being tested as a partner, that means you're not secure with where we are in the relationship. And what does that mean? If you're, if you're not secure where we are in the relationship, that's not me being that it, that's if you're draining the energy from me, that's not me being insecure and that's not me being intimidated. That's just a preference that I have to not be drained every day. Yeah. And, and you, you mentioned specifics, like, do you attack me? Are, are there accusations yeah. here? Yeah. Is, is did these things happen to you in the past? Is there evidence to show like these things happen, not just to me, but to my peers as well? Yeah. So, so one of the things is, is like this, I, this is what I try to tell people. You always need the ability to walk away, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Right. If you're with somebody and you constantly have to accuse them or question them about whether or not they're cheating, a great idea would be to not be in that relationship for one of two reasons, either one, they are cheating in which case you don't need to be in that relationship or two, they aren't cheating and you can't stop accusing them, which means you have a security issue, a, a personal insecurity issue. That means that maybe you need to be single, work on yourself, and then yeah. at some point in the future, find a, a, a later relationship. And, uh, and uh, often, unfortunately, something that happens, and this happens for men and women, is that if you've been cheated on uh, at multiple times in your life, you get to the point where you're in your early thirties, mid thirties, and then you just like, you, you immediately, you see everything through that lens, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I know some women they are like, well, they'll see a guy who's like really good looking and immediate. They're like, no, I've been cheated on guys who look like that. I'm not going to date a guy who looks like that. Yeah. Stuff like that will happen. I know some women, several friends of mine, they're like, they used to date athletes. They're like, I'll never date an athlete again because I always end up getting cheated on stuff like that. You'll bring that baggage with you. And my whole thing is this, man, have enough self-respect, no matter who you are. Again, she might be the hottest woman you've ever seen in your life. He might be the biggest movie star you've ever, you're big, you might be his biggest fan. But if you are consistently questioning yourself about whether or not this other person is faithful, you probably should end the relationship. One, because they might not be faithful or two, because they are faithful and you can't perceive it. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that you, you were saying it doesn't matter if she's the hottest girl ever, but one yeah. thing that you said in a video that I really, really loved, I was obsessed with this. You said, stop giving attention to women because you are attracted to them. Yeah. Elab elaborate on that. Okay. So I, so the thing is, Jessica, like if you won uh, a Pul Pulitzer, right, you did something incredible. That's a, that's something I would like on Instagram. That's awesome. If you paid off a house, if you were, uh, you know, if you got drafted the first pick in the WNBA, that's something I would like, but what do we do as men instead? We look at pictures of boobies and butts, and then we like those pictures. Why are we doing that? Yeah. It's just when you do that, what you're doing, when you give women attention for non-contextualized images of sexuality, all you're doing as a man is lowering your value. I have new, I live in Las Vegas, so I know this is a bit of a, an, uh, an anomaly. But I have several friends of mine, female friends that, that live here, and they'll tell me, they'll have guys paying them to go on dinners with them, pay them to go out to the yachts on vacation. And sometimes these women will be sugar babies, right? They'll, they'll get their rent paid for on a regular basis. And in every one of these cases, these women laugh at those men. 
behind their back. They tell me, ha ha, my sugar daddy did this, blah, 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 whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, and almost every one of these cases, you know what else, Jessica, these same women will have a second man who they do have sex with. And they, that guy doesn't compensate them at all. So they'll have one guy who compensates them and they laugh at him behind their back and another man who like they, who doesn't do anything for it and she has sex with him. And so when you see that over and over again, it just gets to the point where like you 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 have a hard time trusting people. You know what I'm saying? That's where it happens. What was the original question? I, I, I got caught off topic. <laughs> what you can't give attention to women because yeah. they're attractive. Yeah. So it goes back to what I was saying. These guys are giving women money and resources that, that in, in exchange for validation, right? Meaning they could not get attraction from this woman regularly. So they're using money as a crutch. And in doing so, they're lowering their value. This is something I, especially as a performance coach, uh, often when I have men who have an addiction to prostitution, this is one of the things I have to wean them off of. They think that because they pay women for sex and then they're, they're like cool, funny guys that they're like, it's a blend of like, I have game and I pay women for sex. No, if you pay women for sex, it's a problem. It's a serious problem that you have to get help with. And often, often we see it's, you know, wealthy men or professional athletes that are doing this. And they're, what was the, the thing Lil Wayne said one time? It ain't tricking if you got it. Yes, it's still tricking mm -hmm. even if you got it. And so what will happen is these men will give attention and resources. So money, likes, comments to women solely for their physical attractiveness not because they earned it. In every case, whenever I meet a woman, I never. I host several bikini competitions here in Las Vegas. You will never hear me say, look at these sexy ladies ever. These women are so hot. And, how, and, and so if that's the case, and mm -hmm. it's a bikini contest, it's based off yeah. of looks. How they're are you? To me, to, to me, they're fucking athletes. That's why I, 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 I introduce them. Like yeah, they are. I, I introduce them like they're professional wrestlers coming down the aisle. That's how I, we change the music for each one of them. That's how we, I do it. We just had Corey Graves on the show. We'll make yeah. sure that he knows this. <laughs> yeah. Like I get them all in the, in the middle and we put our hands in the middle and I start like giving them a chant. Like I Ray love Little. that. Yeah. So we do that. And the reason why is because I don't, in a bikini competition, I don't need to objectify or sexualize women. People are doing that on their own. I don't need mm. to do that. It doesn't help the situation at all. What I would prefer is if men could treat, if you, if your buddy got a raise at his job, you're like, hey, bro, drinks are on you. Good job, bro. Why can't you treat women the same way? And if you did, you'd be surprised at how much more attractive you would be. Because what happens now is that this woman comes to the realization that I can't get him to stare at my boobs. I do it with every other guy. But for some reason, this guy, I got to work so much harder to get his attention. And so mm -hmm. his value goes up. It's really difficult for most That's men to understand. Tough. Yeah, it does. It's crazy. Does. But the thing is, the thing is, Jessica, if a guy likes you, why couldn't he, uh, why couldn't he say, Hey, you're an interesting person. Tell me more about your life, your family. Why does it always have to be about your physical attractiveness? Mm -hmm. Because the, the thing is, while that, you know, you may be, he may find you physically attractive. Doesn't don't so many others, you get guys sliding your DMS all the time. How does that make yeah. him any different? And him giving you that, those compliments, while it may make you feel better, it does not raise your opinion of him. Right. Again, it doesn't like a man consistently giving you compliments. Again, uh, ladies, if you just make this one change, you'll stop confusing men. Instead of saying, I want compliments from a man saying, instead saying, I want compliments from a man I'm attracted to. I want flowers from a man. No, you don't. You want flowers from a man you're attracted to. You want vulnerability from a man. No, you don't. You want vulnerability from a man you're attracted to. If you can make that differentiation, Instead of saying, oh, I just want guys to come up. And if a guy would just ask me out. No, if homeless people came up on the street and asked you out, you wouldn't go out with them. You want a man you're attracted. It depends at what point in my life, Michael. There was a time. There was, <laughs> was a time. time. Yeah. There was a time. I had zero standards. <laughs> hey, so listen, we were all, let's we were give all them the benefit once. of the doubt. <laughs> we were in college once. He seemed nice. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. He, he, he listened to me. He really saw me as a person. He, he heard me when I needed. Yeah. yeah nobody, yeah. Please, nobody clip this. Nobody clip yeah. this. Please. Yeah. <laughs> But, and it's interesting because, and that's a, an interesting dynamic. Like I, I know I'm not ugly, but I, I also know my personality is way better than my looks could ever be. Sure. So if you're, but if you're trying to make a first impression and men are physical beings, no matter mm -hmm. how you slice it and you like, you do go on the dating apps. I haven't been on the dating apps in a while because they stress me out, but like, how do you make a good first impression without you have to, the looks are important. So how do you find the balance of making a first impression where you want them to get to know you, but you also have to present yourself in a certain way physically? Man, I'm getting stressed out just you asking the question because it yeah. is so complicated when yeah. you think about that whole situation. 
it's really one of these weird situations. So men have several leverage points when it comes to creating attraction with women. It can be their status. It can be their height, their eye color, their facial structure. It can be how famous they are, how much money they have. It can be their social alignments, how funny they are, or how many, how much charisma they have. Just think about Madden or MLB, the show. Each player has different attributes, speed, acceleration. Yeah. Men have so many different attributes and they can attract women. A man can be short. and They want to create a fucking food. player. They, they want to create, create a player. fucking player. Yeah, exactly. And then, like, you know, yeah, exactly. It, it, but then you end up with like Chris Pine, who's like funny, good looking or some, someone like that. Jason yeah. Momoa, right? Someone yeah. like that. Who's like, he's, he's 99 and all these, he's wealthy, high status, all these kind of things. And that's what we want. But for women, it's really crazy because they have this one leverage point over men that exceeds every leverage point that men have over women. And that is their physical attractiveness. Mm. It's great. And it causes men to do crazy things. Great book by Dr. David Buss uh, called The Murderer Next Door. And he goes over the concept of how many murders are committed by men, com com men, men competing with other men over women. It's one of the craziest yeah. things. Like uh, Aaron Clary, who's an economist who came on my show recently, he was talking about the, the entire economy is, is fueled by female youth and beauty. Not females, but female youth and beauty. That's what men compete with other men for, for higher sexual selection and higher status. And it's just so it's one of these crazy things where it's like, I want to tell women, hey, just do this with your personality and have these conversations. And you know, as well as I know, do Jessica, you have some female friends who are knockouts and they could just sit there and just like have just like have bad breath, talk about crazy shit, tell you the earth is flat, whatever. And the dude's like, yeah, I, I, I'll still go out with her. Like, I don't give a fuck. I'll still yeah. go out. And that's what's happened in the dating market now. What's happened more? And by the way, this epidemic is just going to get worse. Ugh. In the last, this is there's some stats that go up about a third. Of, and by the way, these stats go up to 2018. Obviously, the the pandemic kind of threw some of these statistics. It did, off. yeah. But but going up to 2018, from 2008 to 2018, we saw the number of sexless men rise precipitously. About one in three men between the ages of 18 and 24 are still a virgin, or I've had no sex in the last year. It was something like 18 percent of men between the ages of 18 to 30 and had had zero sexual partners and something where in the area of like 23, 28% of men were virgins up to the age of 30, some crazy number like that. Okay. There was this bottom quartile of men that were not participating in dating whatsoever. And because of that, then you get into a situation where your pretty girlfriend, the dude will just do anything to go out with her. And because these men don't have any abundance. So here's the thing, here's the, here's the irony. A man who was around a lot of beautiful women, Jessica is more likely to want to get to know you because the beauty doesn't affect him as much. Mm -hmm. A man who's not around beautiful women as much, my girlfriend is you know, very attractive, she was a bartender, we would get into arguments about things. She would FaceTime me and she'd be like, well, everyone here at the bar agrees with me, Michael. And I'm like, you're a 22 year old, super hot girl with blue eyes and big fake boobs. Like, of course they're gonna agree with you. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? Even when she was right, people still agreed with her, but not because she was right, but because she was pretty. Mm. And so that's this, this thing that happens. As men have less and less scarcity, they can concern themselves more and more with physical attractiveness because they, they, they have less and less access to that physical attractiveness. That's what the irony is. Mm -hmm. The irony is like it actually is the man who has abundance who's probably going to do more to be willing to get to know you because beauty is common to him. Beauty is common to him. And that probably is. And so now here's this double-edged sword. Because when you find that man who's used to being around beautiful women, guess what you're also doing? You're competing with several other women for him. Yeah. That, that in lies the evolutionary mismatch that we're in right now, where there's a small group of men at the top. Uh, uh, it was a doctor, um, uh, professor. Oh, gosh, I forget his name right now. He was saying something to the effect that if dating was a country, it'd be Venezuela like the level of inequity where there's a small yeah. group of men at the top having all the success. The way I like to describe it from a statistical standpoint is there's a top 15% of men that are getting outrageous amounts of uh, attraction and validation from women. There's women below that. And then there's the bottom 85% of women, bottom 85% of men. Those bottom 85% of men are pursuing the women and those women are pursuing the top 15% of men. So it's like a so pyramid. It is kind of like a pyramid, but the problem is when you say, do men or women cheat more? The question you need to ask is low status men and high status men. There needs to be different numbers for them. And women, it's, it's, you don't necessarily need different numbers, but you need different numbers for high status men and low status men. Like do men or women cheat more? A guy who's a billionaire or who was a rock star, the statistics for him cheating are quite different than the guy who's the assistant manager at Walmart. It's just very different yeah. because when women want to have an affair, sex manifests for them. Often men want to have affairs and nobody wants to have sex with them, Jessica. That happens all the time. So it's, that, it's a very different thing that's going on there. So I like to say there's three genders. There's high status men, women, and low status men. 
And so that that makes it a lot simpler because what women will do frequently is they'll complain about a, a they'll complain about a characteristic of a high status man who treated them poorly, and then they'll blame all men for that. But no, it's not all men. There's men down here in this bottom 85% that would treat you like a princess. The problem is they're not as tall as the outfielder you used to date. And they're not as rich as Drake that one time you fucked him. And they're not mm -hmm. as they're not as cool as that one movie star that slipped in your DMs. They're not quite at that level. And so your perception is that they don't stand out. Um, Alex Date Psych recently, he's a PhD student, and he posted this one statistic basically showing that men are more likely to settle for women that are eights, and women are more likely to settle for men that are fives. And that which kind of goes opposite of the points that I've just been making. But the reason why that isn't valid is because most women find most men to be fives. That's the reason why most what, men. What would you define as a five? A, 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 five, a five is like she would not even consider going out with him, like right there at the border of like she would even like look at him twice. But most uh, again, but she'll marry like, him. No, she, not not even. I mean, probably not even marry him. I mean, mm -hmm. so what what happens is um, there's some great statistics that they'll show this. Basically, women will push attractiveness levels for men all to the left, meaning guys who are actually average, they'll they'll rate them as twos, and guys that are like eights, they'll rate them as fives. Like they'll push everything to the left in a short-term context. And then there's a few guys up here at the top, a very small number of guys that are like tens. Whereas women, uh, men rate women fives as fives, sixes as sixes, sevens as sevens, eights as eights. You'll find that often men will rate a, a group of women that are moderately attractive as being moderately attractive. And mm. often women will rate men who are moderately attractive as super fucking average. And because of that, that's the reason why you you find this whole situation to, to, to be the way that it is. Men's physical attractiveness doesn't like, evenly distribute the same way women's does. Hmm. That's, and I guess that makes sense because I, I feel like when I'm thinking about attractiveness, I'm honestly not thinking about what they look like. Like, well, I, did you previously, when you were in college and high school, did you care more about what someone looked like back then? A hundred percent. Yeah. So this is another phenomenon that women tend to look for more out, like, like displayed alpha qualities when they're younger. And then as they get older, his ability to procure, to procure resources becomes more important. But so I will say they, like the, the, the looks factor, they've always stayed the same to me. They've, I've always liked the same guy from the time I was in hmm. high school up until now physically. Have you ever dated a guy that initially you didn't find physically attractive, but there were other qualities? A lot of times, like most okay. times. So, so you understand men don't do that. Often, most well, men don't yeah. do that. Most men don't see a woman that they don't find physically attractive. And then, wow, she has a great personality. Now I want to, it doesn't work like that for, for like, we don't, you, it, most of the time it doesn't do like that for men. I often hear women are like, yeah, I wasn't really asked, uh, interested in him. You know, he get just one after another, asked me out over and over. Finally, I went on a date with him. Turns out he's incredible. It's mm -hmm. like, there's things men can do to overcome physical attractiveness in the beginning, especially in the very beginning. I'm not talking about the mother of your children. I mean, in the very beginning, physical attractiveness is so outrageously important to men that it becomes problematic. And again, if the man does not have a lot of options, then what happens is physical attractiveness is all he cares about. So problematic no. meaning what? Problematic meaning like he can't see red flags or that oh. this is not a good partner to be with, right? You know and, what, women, you know and women don't see red flags because why? Uh, women don't see red flags because like they may be overtly attracted to a man, a man may be love bombing them. So situations where like, for instance, uh, if you consistently, I, I know one woman, she was explaining this to me. She was like, I had one boyfriend who was always honest with me, never loved bomb me and never cheated on me. And I had another boyfriend who would love bomb me all the time and cheat on me behind my back. And I like that relationship better. She, yeah. she enjoyed, and Jessica, you're, you're shaking your head because you've probably seen a similar phenomenon, but like I've seen several women that would prefer to be lied to and loved bombed by a man who's a cheater who had, who gets appreciation from several other women than a boring man who was constantly honest with her the whole time. That's problematic for men when I, yeah. when I see that happening over and over and over. And it's what, it's one of these really weird situations. Isn't that uh, like, well, like just cause I had a therapist, I had my, was my therapist yesterday and we were talking yeah. about inner child work and stuff like that. And I think it has a lot to do with like just what people are used to when they're younger. Like, yeah, like in, and we can talk about attachment styles later, but when it comes to like, we almost prefer the drama sometimes as individuals. Mm -hmm. So we'd prefer that because we're used to the ups and downs of whatever. So it when it comes you, to you. It also lets you know you're alive, Jessica. Like if you, if you, if you accuse your boyfriend of cheating and he doesn't do anything, it's like, yeah, yeah, I cheated, whatever. 
Like it, like no, that's not what you want. You want him to be like, I would never do that to you. Oh yeah. my god, like, just become histrionic. Because when you get that, what it does, a great book called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, he goes over this, your ego is always looking to prove that its own existence. So if I give you some kind of drama and you give me drama back, that lets me know that I'm real. That lets me know that this relationship is real too. And that's a very unhealthy way of doing it. That's a very mm -hmm. unhealthy way. Whereas like, I think a healthy way to do it is to show your partner you care about them through actions. Yeah. I'm here every day. I provide for you. I don't cheat on you. I'm good to you. I take care of our kids. I do that, that kind of thing. That's how, if, if, if a woman had a man like that and received that as love, it'd be much better than her consistently nagging him to see, are you cheating on me? Did you look at that other girl? That kind of stuff. Because it, as men, it drains us of our energy when we have to deal with that on a regular basis. Yeah. And and I, I saw a TikTok. I used to say like, oh, I read this somewhere. I'm going to be honest. I fucking yeah. saw a TikTok. Yeah, but, and it said, this woman said, if you have a crush, you're going crazy. If you yeah. don't have anything, you're bored. And yeah, so was, that's kind of interesting. You're, you're making my point for me. It's just yeah. one of these situations. I forgot who said it. It's like, you can do anything you want with a woman except bore her. And it's, yeah. and I've seen, I've seen examples where men, I know some guys that, you know, they've straight up told the girl, I'm not interested in a, uh, a committed relationship. I'm not interested in monogamy. She says, yes. He continues to have sex with her. He's like, listen, I'm not going to, I'm going to see other women, blah, 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 whatever. And then all of a sudden he sees other women and she goes crazy. And I'm like, wait, but he told you what was going to happen. And you weren't comfortable with that situation. And, and the, the reason why is because he's more interesting. The guy who is attractive to more women is more interesting. And it's mm. politically incorrect as that is, that is the way that it, that's the way the world works. It's not the guy who's really good at talking to one girl. It's the guy who several women find attractive that other women find attractive. The term I believe is called the boy band effect. I think it's uh, where, where women hear everyone screaming for NSYNC so that they find him more, they find NSYNC or whatever, Justin Bieber, name whoever you want, more attractive because Harry Styles, whoever, they find him more attractive because other women find him attractive. And so it, it, you, you get into this conundrum. I'm actually like, for men, I do have a lot of prescriptions. For women, my prescriptions are a little bit different. But my main, the main thing I want to do is a, what's called a description. I want to describe the environment we're in so that we we stop making these mistakes. Like men, you should your addiction to porn is is screwing you over. You're you're sitting there like sliding in girls' DMs uncontact non contextually. It's not working. You're like in in fact like a lot of these things that you're doing they just aren't working. Let's get a hold, a hold of these things, ladies. You consistently like. You, you find this one guy boring and then you think this other guy's exciting. If there's some way before it's too late for you to come to the realization that that boring guy might be the best possible father of your children, could you possibly give him a chance sooner? Or is it a situation? I have a friend of mine. She's 37 years old. You know, she's been married once and now she's dating a male model and, and who's like several years younger than her. And in her mind, it's like, yeah, I just have to be with a guy who's super physically attractive. I just can't have anything else. Mm. It's like, and she told me, yeah, there's this other guy I was with. He was super great. He probably would have been a great boyfriend, but I want this guy instead. Like, can you, can you supersede your own desires to understand that maybe the grass is not always greener on the other yard? And so there's a couple other issues that happen. 70% yeah. of divorces now are initiated by women. Something like 70% of women right now who are married are, are admitting in anonymous surveys to having a backup partner meaning a partner that they would choose in case the relationship didn't work. Here's another one. And I, this has not been verified. I have to go and recheck this. 30% of people on dating apps are married. 30% of the men on dating apps are married, which is mind blowing to me, but it's even crazier. 90, no, I, I, I have a hard time believing this. I think it's probably closer to the 60%, but I saw a study that said 90% of men who are on OnlyFans are married. That, that I don't know if that's correct, mm. but I bet you it's a it's a ridiculously high. Number. And OnlyFans is a is a whole thing that I have like it's a whole avenue in a world that I have no idea like how it works. It's gonna be but... it's gonna it's gonna become more pervasive because yeah. what happens is so when you think about the concept of pornography, pornography is non contextualized images of women who don't know you and you're never gonna meet unless you go to the AVN Awards. You're never gonna meet these women, and trust me, I know some of them. They don't give a fuck about you. They do, they don't want a relationship with you. They don't need to correspond with you. Nothing. OnlyFans, the reason why it's different is because there's this back and forth texting uh, situation that goes on where these guys get what's called a girlfriend experience. They're mm. getting actual interactions from people. I hear women consistently talking to men who are considering taking their own lives. And, and it's like it gets really deep and sad when you actually see some of the levels of despair that some of these men are going through. Right. And so, you know, that's I mean, that's just one of the issues. And, and OnlyFans, I don't I think in a lot of ways exacerbates the problem. I'm not saying it's a bad thing or a good thing. Well, no, it makes sense because you get 
you get what you kind of need from this person yeah. or this situation. You don't have to go out and get it. Yeah, but what's what what makes it worse though is that you're not talking to that influencer that you you subscribe to. You're talking. They to don't know. They don't probably yeah, they don't you're care. Talking, you're talking to a guy in the Philippines who logged into her account, and, and they probably don't care though. You know, like I, it, I don't know. I, th I think they probably do. I think yeah. I think men. But I mean, they don't want to be fooled in that in that regard. But but anyway, the point is, pornography is non contextualized, and uh, OnlyFans is contextualized. Meaning, mm -hmm. there's a reason we have like a these men are, imagine they have a relationship with you. Corey Yee is a, is a big model. She came on my show recently and she was, she, I get messages from this one guy who thinks that they're dating and he's like, can you get me your number? Like, I, I don't have her number and I can't get a hold of her and we're dating and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, what level of mental illness has let you to I, like, not only do I know you're not dating Corey Yee, I know her boyfriend. Like what, yeah. like what level of mental illness has, has derived for you to believe that you're dating this woman? Like it's madness. Like the level of delusion is crazy. And so again, it goes back to my original point, which is we are living in a time of an evolutionary mismatch. And so because of that, um, that's why, you know, the, the rules are, and, and the rules can't catch up fast enough to figure out what's going on. But because yeah. here's the thing, there's no selection pressure anymore, Jessica. There's 8 billion humans on the planet. It doesn't matter what's wrong with you, what genetic defects you have, you can still have children. So the answer is like, there's no problem until, you know, the population collapses. There's no problem. Right. And people were just going to keep going on. It gets even more bleak than this when you start reading things about like AI bots, uh, androids, men having sex with robots, women being able to have children with other women. There's a book about this called The Singularity is nearby Ray Kurzweil. And it goes over these concepts where like we may get to a point where men and women just don't eat each other at all. Yeah. You know, that, that's something that may happen in the future as well. And and you you mentioned this term a lot and it and it's very triggering for me because um I've been love bombed quite a bit. Yeah. And now it now it's a turnoff for me. It never used to be. Mm. Uh, the most recent scenario, I was I went on a date, a third date with this guy, and he asked me to be his girlfriend on the third date, which yeah. meant a week into it, he asked me to be his girlfriend. And I was so grossed out. It freaked me out. I'm like, you don't even know me. Just, so just isn't it hard to give your friends advice? So I have a friend of mine and she keeps getting up in one fucked up relationship after another. Every dude, she, and, and like we, we're all, she would come on my show every week and we do like an update. Who's Christina dating this week? Oh, okay. There's always some fucking DJ bartender, yeah. just fucking scumbag one after another. One day she gets a message where she says, Hey, I met this guy. And a week after we met, he offered to marry me. And I want to tell her, I'm like, that's a prop. But like when I tell her, Hey, there's an issue here. This guy should not be asking you to marry him after a week. What she, what she's going to hear instead is, is, um, what she's going to hear instead is why are you insulting me? Am I not good enough for someone yeah. to want to marry me? But no, what we're trying to explain to you is like, no, this dude's a red flag, but you can't right. see it. You're being love bombed. Yeah. And that's, and at first I was like, that's so sweet, but it, I like didn't talk to him after that. So, yeah. I, but I've noticed it's, it's kind of an influx in this behavior over the last couple of years yeah. And they love bomb. And then if you give into it, you're like, okay, fine. I'll give them a chance. Mm -hmm. It's very much of an avoidant pattern where they just like, ah, no over it. So it's either one or the other where they try too yeah. hard, it's too much, or then they just, they're, they aren't interested anymore because you gave in. Yeah. That, I mean, you know, we would only consider to see it pervasive amongst the population if it continues to work. Yeah. Right. So that means okay. well, the reason why you see love bombing is because you ever had a, a guy He'll message a girl and be like, hey, I'll give you a certain amount of money if you'll go on a date with me. And the girl's like, I can't believe this fucking guy offered me money. Like, what's going on? Why would he ever do that? And the answer is because it worked. Do you, you guys remember yeah. the situation with Matt Lauer, how he was like sexually accosting some of the people he was working with or whatever? Uh -huh. And this woman like reports him for, you know, pulling his junk out and doing all this crazy stuff. And people are like, I can't believe he did that. And I'm like, I can't believe he did that either, but I know why he did it. And that's because it worked. I guarantee mm -hmm. you previously, there were interns that worked for him who actually accepted that type of behavior. And what I've said before, and this is obviously a bit tongue in cheek and it's not realistic, but if women would just stop rewarding those behaviors, we would just never see them anymore. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? And if the same thing with men, if men would step, what, what do I ask men to do? Remember, just I'm accountable to both sides. What do I ask men to do? Stop giving women attention for non-contextualized sexual images. That's what I ask men to do. And if you did so, women would, your value would raise in the eyes of these men mm -hmm. uh, or in the eyes of these women. And what do I ask women to do? I ask women, to, oh, I'm sorry, what were we just talking about? I just lost my train of thought there. Uh, love bombing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, it, again, if women would stop a lot, like anytime they see love bombing. And so here's, here's, here's my big, biggest piece of advice. I tell my guy friends frequently, you need to have one like huge slut friend that you're not sleeping with 
She just, she gives you all the password. She's showing you the seven dudes she's messaging at the same time, sending nudes to, just so you can be just a, like a little bit disillusioned from what's going on there. And I think every woman needs a guy friend who's like a complete player who she's not sleeping with, who's like, who's like giving the game to her, if that makes mm -hmm. any sense. You yeah. Make sense? And then yeah. that's the guy when you're in the relationship, that's the guy you'd be like, yo, am I being love bombed? And he'd be like, yeah, man, he's just like, I even know the book he got that one from, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that would be great. But a lot of times when we're in it, especially when it's a sexual relationship, we don't want to listen to other people. Mm -hmm. We're so in it. That's why grandma always has great advice. You want to know why? Because grandma's seen it all. And grandma doesn't have any, like doesn't have a, a rush of hormones going through her anymore. Grandma's been through menopause. Grandma's at a different place. Grandma can look at things objectively. You think that boy's cute. Grandma doesn't give a fuck about that boy. Yeah. She's not, she's not affected by him and his charm like you are. So she might be able to give you better advice. But a lot of times, especially when we're younger, we don't want to hear that advice. We're oh, yeah. We're also like drowning in like all the hormones and love exactly. and all this other stuff. We don't yeah. realize that's going on. Um, so when it comes to like me being on social media, the algorithm always knows when I've broken up with a guy doing whatever. Isn't that crazy. It's crazy. Or Tarot Tiffany. There's always a tarot card reading that's going to get me yeah. out of He's going to text me back if I just listen. So if we are so overindulged in all this relationship advice on social media, how and it, a lot of it contradicts itself too. So Absolutely. if you are seeing it, I'm told to be the cool girl. I'm told to speak up. I'm told my attachment style doesn't work with this guy's attachment style. I'm overwhelmed with so much relationship advice. So mm. what do I do? When I come to you as a coach saying, there's a lot in my mind, mm. give me advice because I want to do all the things and none of, nothing's working. Um, I think, so this is, it's kind of a difficult situation, but like I would be upfront and direct with as many men as possible, but like also let them know that like, Hey, listen, I've been in situation. I need to get to know you better. Right. Mm -hmm. It can't be what, what I'm saying, Jessica, it can't be a situation where you're telling the guy you need to get to know him better while you're still sleeping with your ex. That's mm. honestly, if you want to know the main thing, it's the girl who's like still sleeping with her toxic ex while going on dates with other guys and then making them wait. I think that's where you get into these problems because you never really fully allow the oxytocin to connect with the new guy because you're still got the oxytocin connecting with, you know, Brock, the bartender. That's the re that's why those issues happen. So that's one thing that I would recommend. Like if you're going to do this, I would recommend just like not sleeping with anyone going out with several people, letting know up front, hey, I want to get to know whether or not this attachment like is going to work between us. Do we get along? Do you can you deal with the fact that I work 60 hours a week? Or is that, that okay to be up front like on the first date about what you're uh, looking maybe, for? Maybe, maybe, not, maybe not the first date. Actually, I so this is just something I recommend. I think women should bring that topic up and it shouldn't be men. I have found that in every case when it is it is a man who is bringing up like let's be in a relationship thing first that it becomes a little bit more problematic. I know this mm -hmm. is a really controversial take that I have. I think women need to slightly be more into men than the other way around because if they're not I agree. women women yeah, you understand. Women yeah. have uh, this massive leverage point of social media of being able to get in unbelievable amounts of attention. So if she has that leverage point of getting more attention. She kind of needs to be a little bit more into him than he is to her. So they can, it can kind of even out. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, is, is the guy that you're with, is he going to be truly comfortable? Uh, is he going to be truly comfortable with the idea that you're going to be interviewing six foot four, handsome, wealthy men on a regular basis? Is he going to be okay with that? If he's not, then, then it's probably not going to work. But here's the problem, Jessica, because I can't give you a great answer for this. You don't know if he's just lying because he wants to sleep with you. Yeah. And that is something that men, and by the way, this is something that's gone out for thousands of years. Men <laughs> lying. It ain't women. new. It ain't new. No, yeah. <laughs> the, the term is, the term is fecundity. Men lying to women about long-term fecundity when in really, reality, they just want short-term sexual acts. Uh. It makes it, I know I, you came here for more answers and I did give you answers. I just didn't give you a strategy. No, like it's, is, it's, but no, you were honest. And I feel no. like I'm glad because at the end of the day, like, it doesn't matter what they say. It's the action, right? Yes. So, so that's, that's the ultimate, uh, the, the two pieces of advice I give women. Number one is have a third party. Maybe it's grandma, an uncle, or a guy friend of yours you don't sleep with who's like just a, a huge player. For them to give you advice on your relationship, that would be the first one. And the second thing is pay attention to his actions. Women mm -hmm. sometimes play games. They'll tell guys, oh, you're super cute when they're really not interested. They just want attention from the dude. Women will go on dates. I, I have, I ask women this every time I do my show, Access Vegas. Ladies, have you ever gone on a date or you know someone who's gone on a date with a guy you absolutely knew you were never going to have sex with? And all of them rose their hand. And mm -hmm. I asked all the gentlemen in the room, gentlemen, have you ever gone on a date with a woman that you absolutely know you did not want to have sex with? And none of them raised their hand. Wow. For men, it, for, it's very simple. For women, sometimes their attention means something and sometimes it doesn't. 
For men, it's very simple. If a man wants to be in a relationship with you, he's going to ask you to be in a relationship. Mm. If a man wants to marry you, he's going to ask you to marry him. If a man wants you to move in with him, he's going to ask you to move in. A man is going to say, a man is going to show you very quickly who he is. But if he says to you words like, I want to be in a relationship, but he only calls you at one o'clock in the morning, what are his actions? And are they indicative of his words? That's the main thing to do. That's the main thing to look like. Yeah. So for men, men, we communicate through actions. We communicate through building buildings and putting together projects and storming beaches and invading countries. Like that's how men, that's how we communicate. We communicate through actions. Are his actions the same as his words? If he wants to be in a relationship with you, or do his actions, are they conducive with him being in a relationship with you? If they're not, he's giving you the answer you're terrified to hear, but you're the, the answer that you know is true. And that's what's really difficult. So those are two pieces of advice. Number one, pay attention to man's actions, not his words. And number two, I would have a third party that is not hormonally invested in your relationship. It can't be one of your female friends who you're friends with who also thinks your boyfriend's hot. It can't be that girl. Totally. That, that can't be girl. It has yeah. to be someone who is totally uninvested sexually in the two of you who can look at your relationship objectively. I think if people got a lot more of that, you'd find a lot better advice because man, yeah. hormones make you do crazy, crazy shit and make you act in crazy ways, make you act like a feral cat. And so you can't, a lot of times, and a lot of people are too arrogant to understand this concept. You, when you're flooded with hormones are not in your best mind state to always make the best decisions. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna tell you something else, Jessica, and, and your, your listeners are not gonna like this. This whole concept of trust your heart, trust your feelings, fuck that shit. That is not true. I can show you numerous examples. If you trust what people do and trust their actions, you will far more, you're far more likely to make the correct decision than if you trust your gut and trust your feelings. If you're a cardiologist and you've done a thousand heart transplants, then you get to trust your feelings. If you're a pilot and you've done a thousand landings, then you get to trust your feelings. But initially, people with no expertise trusting their feelings when it comes to relationships, it is a disaster. And there's a 56% divorce rate in this country because of it. That's the reason it happens. I do not believe in trust your feelings. I also don't believe in follow your passion. I believe in solving someone else's problem. That's a great way to become rich. So these are things. I also don't think, you know, the one, other one is like, hey, I just want to let you know that you're enough. You're in, no, you're not enough. All of us can do better. All of us can do better. Yeah. And as long as we believe all, we're enough, we're going to continue to believe we're enough while someone takes our job and steals our girl. So that's the, that's the thing. You're not enough. We all have to do better. It's, I, I agree, but we're, but we're hairless murder apes. And that's the reason why, you know, it, we, it, we have to consistently compete. And, th and that's interesting because it brings up to the next topic and we wrote one of your TikToks, and it was, it sounded like it was a quote from you, but yeah. that a lifetime of monogamy has never been the natural state for humans. But you yeah. did say, if you want monogamy to succeed, you have to work for it. So nobody, what? Nobody what that pays attention to that last line, Jessica, everyone reads that line and says, Michael Sartain hates monogamy. Everyone reads the, that quote. So the quote is the, the, uh, the quote is monogamy is not the natural state for homo sapiens. And there's no evidence. To and show they just move, move on. Yes. What they, and then the second line is the, the homo sapien experience has mostly been a lifetime of pol or, uh, inner small periods of monogamy interspersed in a lifetime of polygamy. And I had Dr. Buss on my show and made that quote and he totally agreed with it. And so my point in the end was in order for you to mon make monogamy work, it takes work. The belief is I get married. And because we said certain words at our wedding, that that person is always going to be faithful to me. No, you have to fucking stay in shape. You have, she has to perceive at some point that you might be somewhat more attractive, some attractive to other women. She has to believe that if she totally believes that you're just some fat loser who can't bring home the bacon and doesn't provide anything for his family, she is going to lose attraction for you. But, but that's not what it said. It said richer, or poorer in sickness and his health. Sorry, 56% divorce rate. I win point me. I'm so that's just, just the reality of the situation. There's no such thing. Love is conditional, guys. I'm sorry. The only love well, that's the choice. I, I I'm very much. I'm aware that love fades. Love can love fades. Sure. It's it's the choice that you make. The, love love is conditional, but it's except when we're talking about a mother's love for a child. That's that's yeah. not. Conditional. But other than that, love is conditional, and that's a problem thing. A lot of people have a problem with. So they're like, I got married. Or this girl's my girlfriend, so I don't have to work for it anymore. I don't have to take mm -hmm. her on dates anymore. I don't have to stay in shape anymore. You know, I don't have to like, you know, keep killing myself at work to get a better job, to provide a better family for me and my children so they can go to whatever college they want. I don't have to do that anymore. She said those words at our, at our wedding and she's never going to leave me now. 70% of divorces are initiated by women. So like, that's, that's the situation. Like we have to understand. So what, what is the thing I'm describing? I'm describing the work 
that goes into monogamy. Think about a, a, a think about a, a pro bodybuilder. Pro bodybuilders, we all know it's not a secret. They're all taking steroids, so they're taking what? steroids. They're <laughs> they're eating they're eating tons of food. They're taking steroids. They're training several days a week. They're doing things that give them a super physiological level of mass. We agree on that, right? But what mm -hmm. happens if they stopped working out for a year and didn't eat as much? They would lose that mass. That's what monogamy. But you know what's interesting is. And this is just me being a romantic. When I when I hear people talk about the work that's involved, my mind goes to like communication sure. or patience. But that is also that, that is that is that is work as well. But like, consider this, Jessica. Oh, let's let's just say all of a sudden you're on a fucking you know you're doing a a a, a, a show for Barstool, and at the same time they got you on Fox News debating Skip Bayless, and you're making four million a year, mm -hmm. and you're 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 part like all of a sudden. Is that the trajectory you have for my yeah. career? I, I don't know where it is. Yet. I don't know where it is. I think, I think you, you, you'll be the uh, GM of a, an NBA team or something. Okay, that the, works. Manager of baseball. <laughs> whatever, whatever your trajectory is, let's say you level up to a point. Do you know when people make more money, they put up with less shit. When girls have a glow up and all of a sudden they get more attraction for men, they put up with less shit. And when mm -hmm. men make more money, they put up with less shit. You have two partners. What if one of the partners becomes excessively a higher status than the other? What happens? That yeah. often leads to a breakup. That often leads to a breakup. Normally, though, one of the biggest indicators for people to get divorced is when a woman starts making more money than men. And what it really means is not that like she got promoted in her job. What it means is the man lost his job. And the woman continued to be the breadwinner. And at some point, often that is that is a massive precipitator of divorce. So like, what, what? but anyway, going back to the main point, what is that? That's work that I have to do to maintain. Yeah. Since me being a bodybuilder is not a normal state for humans, if I stop working out, I stop looking like a bodybuilder. And it, with monogamy, if I have two partners and they're not both working together to make the monogamy work, because monogamy is not the natural state for human beings, that, again, in in certain uh, Middle Eastern countries, they stone women for adultery. Do they do they have laws where they stone you for not eating? Do they have laws yeah. where they stone you for not eating sweets? Do they have laws where they stone you for not going to the Sometimes bathroom? Sometimes wish that's the only kind of discipline I could ever have yeah. when it comes to dieting, but no. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like we don't. We, those countries don't stone people for doing things that are natural, right? Yeah. Like if 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 monogamy was the natural state, you wouldn't have to stone people for not being monogamous. You wouldn't have to do anything because everyone would be monogamous. The reason yeah. why you have to stone women because they've cheated, which by the way, of course, is a horrible thing. But why would you do that? It's because it's not the natural state. Yeah. That's the reason why. That's the reason why men who cheat on their wives in the military are subject to court martial. You have to have rules in place because people are breaking those rules. You yeah. don't have rules. That, there's no rules in place that you have to breathe a certain amount of breaths per hour because biology dictates that up to us. Yeah. It's not something you had to pass a law to do, right? There's no, there's like, I find the color orange uh, attractive. There's no law that says I can or can't. We don't need laws for that, but we do need laws for monogamy. Why is that? Why would yeah, we need laws for something that is natural? We, the reason why we need laws for it is because it's not natural. That's so interesting. And, and, you know, we all, we know the divorce rate 56%, but you can go into depth about that because some people have the actual balls to get the divorce. Mm -hmm. How does it mean that all the other marriages, the leftovers are successful? So, so, so it doesn't mean they're successful. It's great. You, you should, you should, you should reach out to James Sexton. He's a divorce attorney. He's great. He's going on Joe Rogan this week. Oh, um, I'm obsessed just, with him. I love yeah. his, I love his chat. So, so James Sexton. Yeah. Yeah, so James and I, we text every once in a while, and I'll ask him for stats. So Let James, him know I'm a big fan. I'm a huge sure. fan. Yeah, for sure. The uh, divorce rate for first marriage is 52%. Second marriage, I want to say 63, something like that. Divorce rate for third marriage is like 73%. Mm -hmm. And if you if you it average that all out, it ends up being 56%. So he's talking about, okay, so what about the 44% of people that don't get divorced? And he's like, about half of them are, are, are unhappy as well. About half of them are unhappy as well. So it is, it's, it's a really difficult situation. And again, is it because divorce is bad? No, divorce, I mean, I'm sorry. Is it because marriage is bad? No, marriage is a great institution because it provides for stability in a family and it provides for a two-parent household for children. So in that yeah. case, it is a fucking terrific thing that we have marriage. The, the issue with marriage is it's not updated to 2024. It doesn't have adaptations and software update to match the fact that your beautiful wife that you just married who's 22 also has a ton of fucking options on social media. Mm. Yeah, no, and that's interesting because 
it's the rule book wasn't prepared for the Instagram of the world. Yeah, that's exactly and, right. And I heard, because I, I was listening to James Sexton earlier. I just, I love his chats. And he said, like, people have more avenues to end marriages because. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're not disincentivized to not do so. And there's very little stigma uh, to do to not do so. And even if you're Catholic, I mean, you really you're not going to get excommunicated from the church if you get divorced. If you're Methodist or Protestant, if you're, uh, you know, if you're Baptist, like they, they just accept divorce. So there's not a lot of, of uh, reason for you to not get out of a relationship in, in addition to, you know, alimony payments and things like that. And yeah, uh, so so people people are not incentivized to stay in relationships. I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just saying that it's the truth. It just and because of that, marriage becomes an antiquated idea, even though it's a good idea with a really good purpose behind it. It becomes antiquated because it's not up to date for modernity. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just a very interesting um, subject. But before I let you go, it was interesting because when you popped on here, I was like, this guy has like a sports radio like yeah. aura. I got that from you. And you have a background in, in sports radio. So watching kind of sports radio evolve over the years, you mentioned Pat McAfee, but it's totally different from when yeah. I first started. So even before that, what is what are your thoughts on how sports radio has changed over the years? So, so the first the first twenty four hours all sports radio station was the Fan in New York, and then after mm -hmm. that we got one in Dallas called Sports Radio thirteen ten the Ticket in Dallas. The one several Marconi's, and it's it's probably like it dominates its market more than any other radio station I've ever heard of. And one of the wow. things that they did, did different is it wasn't just sports talk; it was guy talk. Bartool bar. Barstool Sports, whether or not they know it, is a derivative of what the ticket was doing back in like 1993, 1994. And, and so I think what's made it different is like, if you, if you hear uh, Club Shay Shay, you know, Shannon Sharp, he starts talking about oh, how yeah. he dealt with his ex-wives. We yeah. would never talk about that on sports radio, but he's talking about, would I pay for a woman's dinner or this kind of stuff? You hear, see him and Ocho Cinco going over those concepts. Yeah. You see Gilbert Arenas talking about the women that he was dating. What's going on here? What's happening is that we're we're taking this thing that that unifies a lot of men, which is sports. What is it really? We're watching groups of men accomplish goals with other groups of men. Where does that come from? It's evolutionary. It's the men going out as a group to go hunt the gazelle. It's just an evolution. It's just an artifact of that. And we love watching these groups of men uh, uh, achieve goals, even when they're not our team. I loved watching the Denver Nuggets win a championship last year, even though I'm a Mavericks fan. It's like we still enjoy watching these men come together and do something amazing, an incredible pass or a, 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 an incredible double reverse play in football, the Philly special. We just see like all the planning that went into that. And we admire that as men. It's like the apex of human existence. When we see that, what was the first part? Um, the evolving over the years, sports radio. Yeah. yeah. So we, I mean, the, the concept of sports radio. So we have all these men coming together in this arena where we watch each other work together. And then, so what else can we do? Well, let's say, uh, you know, I'm having trouble with the kids. So we'll do a segment on the kids. Yeah. I'm having trouble. You know what? Me and the kids, we all went to go see Dune together. Okay. We're going to talk about Dune. You know what? My kids, they're on this new thing called TikTok. And so you'll see these men that are in their thirties, forties, and fifties talking about the world and like, like sort of sharing ideas with one another in a, in a happy, playful way. And there's usually a lot of humor involved. Uh, if you've ever heard fake Jerry on, on uh, sports radio, 13, the end of the ticket, I recommend right after this, go listen to fake Jerry Jones. Okay. You will urinate on yourself laughing. It I is love so that. Funny. And Jerry Jones thinks it's funny. It's oh, really good. Funny. Good. Yeah. So, so that, that's the thing. I think the, the thing about sports radio is it before it was just about statistics. I have a friend of mine. She's, um, she's a model. And then she also does a, a, a radio show. Uh, and it's just nothing but stats. And I was just like trying to tell her, I was like, just, you know, we don't need all the stats. We can look yeah. up the stats for ourselves. A lot of times we need a face or a feel to it. We need to kind of understand like what it felt like for me in 2011 to see the Mavericks finally win a championship after 31 years. And then what it finally lets, you know, felt like to see the, the Rangers who moved to Texas in 1974 to finally win a world championship and us to have a parade in Dallas for the Texas Rangers. Something I would have never believed. Like, what yeah. is that like for the city? What is it like for a city like Cleveland that just can't get, get out of its own way? There's, a, there's an extra context that comes around that we can talk about in sports that I think it kind of unifies people. I mean, the best example I think is all of us sitting around our TVs and watching the last dance during COVID. We all mm -hmm. sat there, all of us watched it. It was an incredible experience that the yeah. whole country shared together because if we're a man, we remember Michael Jordan kicking people's ass. But if we're a woman, we see this passion that he had. We see the fact that, wait a second, his power forward was dating Madonna. Like what's going on here? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like there was so much, there was so much. I mean, I remember him kicking ass. 
for the record. Yeah, I do remember him sure. kicking us. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. My my girlfriend told me yesterday she didn't know Michael Jordan was still alive. Like like it's yeah. like it, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't realize that. So no, it's it, okay. My my friend thinks Barry Bond still plays. So yeah, it's yeah, fine. it's the exact same kind of thing. But yeah. yeah, I mean that's that's what happens. Sports sort of unifies us, and it's just this really great way. It's like I don't want negativity. Uh, I have a friend of mine, my my buddy Destiny. He debates uh, Israel versus Palestine all the time, and it's just like I watch him, and I'm like, bro, that looks like such a beating. They attack him all day long. I did a couple of debates on Ukraine, uh, Russia, and just the. The, the grief that I get in the comments is just crazy. When I talk about sports, it's just laughing and joking. Yeah. People make fun of me for being a Cowboy fan. I don't care. It's not that big of a deal. You know, I love the Longhorns. It doesn't bother me. It's not It's not personal. So it's a place where we can go and have a little bit of that conflict, but it's in, posi it's in a positive way. We don't take it personal. We don't go after each other. Unless you're a hooligan in, in the UK and you, yeah. you, those guys all go kill each other. There was a straight up fight this. in the parking lot. Yeah. 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 But it, and yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because I remember not and not just like the last dance, but like all everything that that came to fruition during COVID. And I was at the peak of like kind of starting at the peak of my career. Yeah. And I was working for NBC Sports. And it and I just felt guilty. I'm like, I'm not solving COVID. I'm not doing anything. I'm writing a blog about sports. But somebody's like, no, you're giving me like um a break from all this shit a break like, from and, it is exactly right yeah a break from everything and that that helped me a lot because i was like i don't feel like i'm doing anything like i feel silly like covering the oakland a's right now like what like when there's a big virus killing people yeah and and they they were just like no you kind of gave me a, a break and a sense of relief from all of it and that made yeah, me feel crazy really good. yeah yeah it's one of those things like you keep hearing people like me depress you with stories of hairless murder apes and then you want to go off and you want to laugh about something crazy that happened or, or see your face that, uh, that uh, buzzer beater that um, Kyrie had over the nuggets the other day, like the whole, like just the, the exuberation and joy that happened yeah. from something like that. It's just, you're right. It is a break. Yeah. And it's just sports like changed my life when I was little and I'm so lucky that I can continue doing that. But this was, yeah. this is amazing. Cause I, like I said, I literally was manifesting having a relationship coach come on and I was talking to my producer about it and he's like, that's kind of a good idea. So I'm glad yeah. that we got to do this because it's a an avenue I've always been curious about. And I wanted to um, like to pick your brain and I, I love all your stuff. I think it's really honest and yes. it's very, it's like, it's very, you have this way about you where you're not like, I don't have to use this term, like a douchey guy who's like, listen to me. I know everything. Cause you, you see both sides to it and, yeah. and that's, and that's refreshing, you yeah. know? Yeah, I appreciate Thanks that. Thanks so yeah, much for it. stopping by. I appreciate well, it. Hey, thank you. Let me know if you come out to Vegas. We'd love to have you on our show, uh, Rolo and I. Like I said, he's from Reno. Uh, but just uh, let me know whenever you're out here. But yeah, this is great. Thanks. That was relationship expert and and life coach Michael Sartain. Um, very honest and and to the point, short and to the point, if you will. And I think it was important for me to hear it. Hopefully, you guys resonated with it as well because. It's, it's, it's tough out there, man. And I was happy to know that it's not an easy factor as far as relationships go. I wish it was, but unfortunately there's a balance and he definitely hit on all of those points. So, so thankful for him to stop by short and to the point, make sure you subscribe to this podcast where you can get podcasts and follow our YouTube page at awful announcing. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks to Philip and everybody else for always giving me support and we will see you next time. One even more short and to the point, follow Jessica at Kleinschmidt JD and head over to the comeback.com and awfulannouncing.com.